Hey everybody. Today we're building beautiful histograms and frequency polygons in R using the qplot command. There are lots of different ways of doing graphics in R. I think the best looking displays come from the ggplot2 package. And the easiest way to get started there is using the qplot command. So that's what we're going to cover in this video. Throughout, we're going to be dealing with the faithful data set. Let's take a look at that. It comes built in with R. Uh, it consists of 272 observations of eruption time and waiting time between eruptions in minutes of the old faithful geyser in Yellowstone National Park in the United States. We want to plot histograms and frequency polygons for the waiting variable, the waiting time. Again, we're going to want to use the ggplot2 package. Now that does not come pre-installed with R, so the first thing that we need to do is to actually install those families of package, that, uh, that family of functions. You only need to do this once. The first time you do plots like this, you need to type install dot packages parenthesis quote tidyverse. This will be very quick for me because these are already installed on my machine. For you, it might take a few minutes. You only need to do that once. However, Every time, you need to, every time you start a new session, you need to let R know that you actually want to use those functions by typing library, parenthesis, quote, tidyverse. There we go. So it's actually loading in eight packages of functions. There's um, a lot of useful functions in each of these packages. As your skill in R grows, you will um, find use for a great many of them. However, today, we're just going to use ggplot2 and in particular, we're just going to use the qplot command. It's short for quick plot, and it's supposed to mimic the behavior of other plotting commands that you might have used in other programming languages. So we want to do histograms and frequency polygons. Those are both single variable plots. So let's specify the variable. x equals the variable we want is going to be waiting time inside the faithful data set. So we want faithful dollar waiting. So R knows that that's going to go on the x-axis. Now we have to say how we want the data to actually be displayed. The syntax there is geom equals quote, and let's start with a histogram. There we go. We've already got something that looks better than what we would get out of base R using, for example, the hist command, but it's not yet looking professional there's a number of things kind of wrong with this. In particular, I see the label on the x-axis is the technical name of the variable, faithful dollar waiting. That's not something the public needs to see. I don't have a main title. I don't have a label on the y-axis. I'm also not in love with the fact that all the bars kind of run together. I'd like to have some sort of border on those so that I can tell them apart. More generally, I'd like to be able to tinker with the color of my bars. And of course, as I mentioned at the beginning, I also want to do a frequency polygon. Let's deal with the labels first. I use the up arrow to get my previous command. And then I'm going to start adding some arguments to my qplot command to tinker with my graph. To do the label on the x-axis, the syntax is xlab equals quote. And let's go with waiting time. While we're at it, let's do a y label. ylab equals quote frequency. There we go. And let's add a main title to our graph with main equals quote. How about just old faithful? All right, so that's good. A little better, a little more information there. Now let's deal with the color. Again, I said I don't like that the bars all run together. Another up arrow to get to my previous command. And I'm going to add a new argument. I want to change the color of the boundary of the bars so the Syntax there is going to be color equals or call equals I parenthesis quote and then the color that you want dark blue. And now we'll be able to tell the bars apart. It's a little bit better. I'm still not in love with the dark gray interiors of these bars, so let's go back and change that. The syntax there is fill equals I parenthesis quote and how about we do light blue. All right, now we're starting to get to something that looks a little bit more professional. Of course, you've probably noticed that I've been getting a warning message using bins equal 30. By default, R is going to construct its histograms using 30 bins. In this case, we get a pretty good histogram using 30 bins. 
However, we might want fewer, we might want more. So let's see how to tinker with that. Another up arrow. And I'm going to add the argument bins equal, let's go with 20. Great. So that's another pretty good histogram. Um, I don't have a huge preference between this one and the previous one. However, cautionary tale, if I use too few bins, I could start obscuring the patterns of the data. Here, for example, it's less obvious that I'm dealing with a bimodal distribution than it was with the previous ones. So let's go back up to where we had the 30 bins. Okay, so um, I, noted, I noted earlier that we were letting R know that we wanted to do a histogram inside of the qplot function using the geo equals command. The logic here is that a histogram and a frequency polygon really have a lot in common. You're plotting the same variable going left and right, and you're plotting frequencies going up and down. It's really just the difference of how the data is displayed. And so instead of having a whole new command for a frequency polygon versus a histogram, we just change the one argument, the geom argument. So here we want freq, F-R-E-Q, poly, frequency polygon. Great. Now, fill is an unknown parameter here. There's nothing to fill in, really. So let's go back and delete that just for um, uh, just to be a slightly bit OCD about it. Notice that the labels um, stayed exactly the same, xlab, ylab, and main. All those arguments worked just fine with the freak polygeome. We could change the color here if we want to get a different color line. For example, red might be pretty. And of course, we can change the bins, again, to have more or less detail in our display. So the last thing I think I want to mention right now is um, some of these labels that I put on my data, uh, that I put on my arguments. I explicitly told, X, or told R to plot waiting time on the x-axis. In fact, even if I don't say that, R will assume that the first variable you feed it should go on the x-axis. Now, what if I leave out the geom? Well, R has a default there too. And in fact, that default is going to be the histogram. So that's even one we could leave out if we do want a histogram. Of course, our fill color is gone now, so we've lost out on that. Final thing I want to show, I guess one last final thing, is um, an alternative for this syntax here. Here we specify the data set by saying faithful dollar, and then the name of the variable within the data set. That's fine, that worked. That can sometimes be cumbersome, however, particularly if you're doing a plot that has multiple variables. And we'll see more of that when we get to scatter plots. So instead of doing that, let's just specify the x value waiting. So right now, if I hit return, R is not going to find waiting. It's not looking in the faithful data set. It's looking in my global environment. So I need to specify that data set somehow. The additional syntax I need is data equals, and in this case, it's in the faithful data set. So now we should get back that original histogram.